everybody, it's Sam at Makes Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is another Easter project, and as you can tell, it's a giant carrot. So, um, yeah, a little bit of a more of a, a contemporary, abstract looking carrot, but a carrot nonetheless, and I love it. It fits loads and loads in. I'm going to be buying some um, mini eggs uh, tomorrow, put them in cellophane, and they're going to go inside. So you can put a little tag on if you want. I did start preparing one, but then I thought, actually, this is going in my basket which is here. So obviously I've got a card that's going in there as well. That was the project that I'd made before. This is gonna sit inside as well, like that. And it's got all the green in there as well. And then there's a few others going in as well, which you will see. Um, but yeah, so basically you just undo the ribbon on the top here and then it undoes like so. Opens up to reveal a very large inside um yeah straightforward to make a little bit of the gluing i guess is the hardest bit because you've got to sit there and kind of hold things in place for a while um but in terms of scoring and all that kind of stuff it's very very easy so i'm not going to do the bow i'll just do that bit back up for now um, but like i said that's how i've done the tag you could put happy easter now you could stick it down here if you wanted or just have it kind of hanging off there would look really nice as well but i just pulled out all those colors that were inside inside on this one okay so you're going to need just pop that one there for one minute push my phone okay so i've already prepared one half because it comes in two parts and i preferred prefer, <laughs> prepared a bit of my uh, grass um it's not even grass is it it's the the leaves the foliage on the top of the carrot it's the evening i've had a long day um okay so we're just cracked straight on into the scoring. So you're gonna need, make sure I'm all in there. So two pieces of six by whatever length card you're using, okay? So if you're using 12 by 12, you could do six by 12. A4 is six by five and, uh, sorry, A4 would be six by 11 and five eighths or three quarters. And if you're using letter paper, it will be six by 11. Any of those measurements will work and I'll explain a little bit of the scoring when we get to it. So first of all, you want to score along the six inch side, you want to score it three inches all the way down, okay? Then rotate it and you want to score along whatever length it is that you've got, do your first score line at one inch. Then if you've got a 12 inch card, you're going to score from this side in by three inches. So you will score at nine inches, okay? Basically you need to have three inches you need to have whatever, you need to score down here by whatever width this piece is here because it will form this perfect square on top. So if it's 12 by 12, you'll come down and score at nine. If you're using the same as me, which is A4, and it's coming in at 11 and 5 eighths, then you will score at eight and 5 eighths. If yours is coming in at 11 and 3 quarters, then you'll score at eight and 3 quarters. If you've got the 11 inch card, you will be scoring at eight. So all it means is that if you're using 11 inch, you're gonna have a slightly shorter carrot. And if you're using 12, then you're gonna have a slightly longer carrot. That's all it's gonna do, but you can still do it with that. So I've tried to make sure that it was something that people can make with anything that they've got really. This also evolved from my pumpkin that I made um, for my Halloween series. So, um, yeah, so I just kind of played around with that and made it a bit longer. Um, okay, so you need to repeat that so you've got two pieces. Then get rid of the school ball because you don't need that anymore. And what you need now is a metal ruler. And I find using the smaller end of the stylus that works best here. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna score. So you've got these one, two, three, four, five, six squares all along the top here. The, sec the middle square on each of these three inch panels, so this one here for example, the left and the right hand bottom corners of it, we're gonna score from down to the corners of here. So again, that one we're gonna score down to there. And this is exactly the same concept as the pumpkin one, except instead of scoring a straight, straight line, we scored a curved angle. So if you want to have a curved looking one, I guess it would kind of work. Um, I play around with it, have some fun with it. So let me just do this one first and then I will bring it up so you can see it. You need to be really accurate with your scoring. You want to make sure you do get it point to point. Um, you don't really want to be off with this, otherwise it, you know, it might not join that nicely. 
like so, and then this one, just bring that one down, and again, like so. Okay, so if I just hold that up so it catches, there we go, you can see those score lines. So it's coming from this middle square, so there's those one, two, three, the middle one, bottom left hand side, score all the way down to the top of this big you know, square down here, so just down to that score line. And again, then the other side, so the bottom right hand side, score all the way down, and you can see there they're meeting, and then that one comes up and goes off that one and then the last one comes down like so okay so repeat that on your second piece and then you want to burnish all of your score lines so carefully go along and get all of those burnished so do the main ones first and once you've done the main ones don't do these ones yet I find it's easier to do them when you cut these two bits first so I'm going to cut just up this bottom score line and I'm just removing just kind of the bulky bit again because you're going to see all this it's all exposed you can see it all here so it's just nice just looks a bit more neater so just take such a tiny piece there then rotate to this end and just cut down every one of these score lines just to that first score line okay like so and then we're going to cut from the end here you're going to remove that completely like so. Go to the other end and remove that one, like so, and then you'll be left with four. One, two, three, four. The two in the middle you're going to remove completely. So again, just really neatly, and this is exactly the same process that I done for the pumpkin. So again, just get rid of that. Okay, so that is now the shape you should have, and you want to repeat that so you've got two pieces, so you have your two big squares, and then this with these score lines. Now you can burnish these, so very carefully. This is where I find, find, and find found my bone tool really helped getting right up to this edge here. So, because you've got such a tiny little amount here, but that will be glued to another piece of card, and I'll show you how to do that with, you know, with ease when we get to that bit. So just take, spend some time, and you're folding them all down on each other. The ones in the middle are really easy those ones are done and then that one like so and then the last one again take some care making sure that you get it right up to the end and this is what I mean about making sure those score lines are perfect if I just bring that right up now to the camera the light you can see that I've got a really nice sharp kind of point with that score line okay Right, now we need to glue. So I find the wet glue works best for this and this is what I was saying was the most fiddly bit really now is just getting it glued together. So what you wanna do is go right to the end, just put glue on one side of this like long half triangle. You've got a big triangle in the middle and you just wanna put it onto one half. But you do wanna make sure you get right up to the end here and then just kind of rub it out with, rub, you know, Bring the glue right to the edge there it's all going to dry clear i know this glue that i use dries completely clear then fold it over okay don't fold it completely flat but with your bone tool lift it up and work it against that score line and you want to push right to the end and actually just manipulate it over a little bit so you're actually creating like a one eighth of an inch little piece there can you see so it has stuck now to this piece on this side. Without, if you didn't kind of just push it over a little bit there, then it would just, it wouldn't join properly. But just holding it up there and just following your bone tool all the way down that score line will not only give you a perfect, really nice crisp edge here, but it will also make sure it's all stuck together. And then just pull all of that glue all the way up to the end and you'll see now it all comes out on the bone tool, like so, and just rub away any excess. And that will be so secure now, and then once it's dry we'll be cutting that away. If you've got any glue here, if you've got loads, then rub it away, but that glue there will dry completely clear. So that's what you want to do. 
So you want to, you see, you've got to be really careful on that end bit to make sure that stays attached. So don't even attempt to, um, you know, start folding it and bending it until that is completely dried out and it's rock hard. Okay, so I've got that one and then I've got this one that I've done already. Now this one here, that's really, really hard, that piece of card. So now what I can do is cut about a quarter of an inch away from the score line all the way down. And what that does is just removes that bulk and it just allows you to have more room inside your carrot. <laughs> and now I can bend that right the way around, fold it right back over on itself and it is still joined right up to the very, very end there. Okay, and that's because I've let that sit and let that dry. So at this point now, you kind of just need to walk away from it and just leave it and let it set. Um, so both pieces are completely hard. So that's what I'm gonna do with that bit for now. Leave them to one side. Whilst that's kind of doing its thing, we can do the little um, leave, leafy bits, yeah, I guess on the top. So you need two pieces of three by three, okay? And then you need a pair of these cool scissors. Now, if you don't have these scissors, then you can just use normal scissors and just cut individual strips. But basically these are kitchen scissors for cutting vegetables and making things look fancy. Um, they've never been used in the kitchen, but they're used a lot in the craft room. So basically just choose a three inch side and you want to come in about the width of whatever the gap is between the scissors. So in this case, it's about one eighth of an inch. So I'm starting one, in, one eighth of an inch in and then just cutting down and where the scissors stop is then what's giving me this kind of tab at the bottom, like so. And then again, you wanna come in one eighth of an inch, so you're already starting off your next kind of little, um, I don't know, whatever you wanna call these. Um, and then again, always coming in one eighth of an inch, roughly. Don't worry if it's a little bit odd, because let's face it, they're not perfect anyway in real life. And then the very end ones, again, just, bring that right down like so. Then I just used my bone tool and I kind of rolled some of them that way, then turn it the other way, rolled some that way, back the other way and so on just so you've got them all all over the place because that's how they would be if you look at a real carrot like so. There. So you want to do that twice, so you've got two of these. And these are great for using on cards, for using on the bottom of gift boxes if you want to create like a grass scene. Um, these are great. I mean, already that looks like, you know, if you would imagine this is the bottom, there you go, that looks like grass. So another cool little thing there. Um, I've got my ribbon already ready here as well. I've got 19 inches I just cut off. Um, but obviously, you know, you want to make sure you can get your bow made and stuff with that. Okay, so I'm just going to let mine dry. Okay, and so I'm pretty happy that that one is dry. I'm still going to leave it this way for the minute. I'm not going to fold it over like this one. So I'll just leave that in the same way just for the purposes of the video. So now you want to stick another two together. And obviously now these are separate, so it looks a little bit different. But basically you want to, you know, to have... So this one completely flat with the bit that you've just stuck. I've just trimmed that bit, which I showed you. This is the outside that's all nice okay the bits with all the bits inside you want facing up so this one I'm going to open up actually now very carefully like so and when it's flat again just go along and just make sure you've got a really nice crisp edge like so and then these two are going to stick like so okay you can see what I've got, so it's the two outer bits. Those two triangles are gonna now stick together like this. So again, grab your glue. I've got a really noisy ring on today. <laughs> um, and just, again, apply the glue all the way on, just on one half. Like so. Make sure you get it right up to that tiny, literally it'd be millimeters, um, you know, wide, but it will stick. And because you're going to manipulate it a little bit wider, um, it will obviously all work fine. So now just stick them together, making sure they line up perfectly. The most important bit is making sure it's flat, because that's obviously the under underneath of this is the outside of the box. So as long as they're completely flat together, you can kind of start working them together. And what you can do is just like so, and I'm making sure I'm sticking 
the sides there with my bone tool. Again, I'm kind of pushing that card up so it is sticking together. So there's literally, I'd say two mil sticking right at the top there, but it's enough. Bearing in mind, it's only little gifts in these. It's not like they're gonna be used as like a handbag or holding really heavy items. And then just pinch the rest together so it's stuck. But the most important bit is this edge, this end bit here. And again, just leave that for a minute and let that okay. all dry. So another thing, if for some reason, you know, you don't get a perfect join here and there's a gap where maybe it's not been cut right or something, um, you could, on the outside, there's no reason why you couldn't put ribbon around the top of this, because this would be where you would notice any kind of gaps. This is where, it, where this is where it's joined by literally that tiniest piece. If there's a hole there or a gap, just put some ribbon around this top piece and it's easily disguised. Um, so you can see now, if I bring that up, just how much is attached there. It is the smallest bit on the side, see? Literally millimetres, but it is stuck. Same with that one there, tiniest amount. And then the other one there as well, here. Okay, now that one is the dry. That's the one I've just done. This one here I'm gonna cut. So again, it doesn't matter which end you start from, but come in about a quarter of an inch, I would say, and just remove that bulk like so. And I'll do this one now as well, actually, because it won't hurt this bit. Like so. Okay, so I'm just taking all that bulk, and now it means that we've got lots and lots of room inside. The only bit that you won't cut the bulk from is this bit, but the way we stick it together, it'll be flat inside on one of these sides anyway, so it won't interfere. Again, I'm just going to make sure that that is all joined. So now what we've got to do, this is all your inside, remember, with all these bits. So you're going to bring it round, and we're going to put glue on one of these, and then they're going to go in like so. And that's where we need to make sure that this top bit sticks. And that's where the carrot is basically then going to come together. Okay, right. so pick whatever one you want to add your glue to first. I'm going to pop it again, go right up to that end. Okay, that's the most important bit of all of this box. <laughs> it's the hardest part. And again, with this one, because we can't obviously apply any pressure, I'm just going to make sure that the glue is literally right up to the edge there. Doesn't really matter too much about that inside bit. If you've got a glue that's slightly better when it's just turning tacky, like it's just drying, then that might be good for this part as well. So now just fold it in and carefully line the whole thing up and then squeeze it down. So now you're flattening that whole side or the whole box, okay? So this is what I mean inside, it'll be flat now on one side inside that box, so it doesn't matter, it's not going to interfere. And it also means that you can get a nice join on that corner at the top here. Okay, so I'm turn it over, just make sure it's all nice on that side there as well. And just leave that, just give that a few minutes to just completely dry. Okay, so you can enough. see now when I kind of form it back into its shape, that's nicely joined there at the top. Okay. So now we can just seal off the bottom. Decide if you've got a preference to what you want to be at the front or the back. I'm not too fussed because there's joins on all of, the, all of the edges. Basically fold one piece down and just pop some glue inside and pop the other one down, pop some more glue. Next one. And then the last one. Okay, pop it on its, um, you know, up the right way and just pop your ruler in there and you should be able to just make sure that they all stick nicely together. Then again, choose what you want to be your front. So I'm gonna have maybe, I'll have this one here. So these two side bits are gonna go down and then these two, you're gonna pinch the tops until they line up perfectly together, like so, okay? Then with your grass, you want to put some glue on one side of the tab at the bottom, like so. And then just stick it, it's about half an inch, that little tab. Just stick it on the very end. So the grass, the cut piece, is the bit that's coming off from the, the top here. All right, that's that one. Flip it over, 
Okay, so that's them now both stuck down. Then pinch them back together again, making sure they're lined up, the two orange bit tops are lined up like so, and then that, the whole thing means it's all squared off. Then pinch it down a little bit further because it's just below this green bit here. With my um, hole punch, I'm lining it up with the bottom of the green strip and just punching in. It's about three quarters of the way in. And then just go on to the other side again, making sure it's all nicely still lined up using that green line as my gauge, so it's nice and straight. Ooh. Like so. Okay, there we have it. And then with the ribbon, you wanna thread it through, keeping it pinched together. Obviously you'll put in all your bits and pieces. And that one up, and again, my other piece, and then just tie it in a nice bow. Okay, and there you have it. A really cool, very large carrot. So if I grab, as another, because I was thinking about this when I was making it the first time around, but if you've made this basket, you could have, let's see, just bring that up a bit more, but you could fill this, you know, with, it, with another, I'd say you could get four in here, maybe not have as much of the grass in there as I've got, but if you imagine you've got this with all these carrots coming out, I think that would look really quite cute and they'd also be nice um, for a Easter egg hunt as a gift at the end. Um, there's so many fun ways to do it. If you haven't already seen the tutorial for this I'll share that now as well because this was the first project that I made um, and I've made this one as well so I'll share that and they'll all be at the end of this tutorial. Um, but there you have it, so a fun um, Easter project from me today, hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye!